This is an angiogram here. It's an areocaudal view of the left coronary. And what do you see here? Something noticeable. I will start giving the answer. So you notice on this angiogram that we see some left ventricular filling. So one is a reflex maybe that we have what we call coronary cameral fistula from the left coronary to the ventricle. Now, which ventricle? In order to define left or right ventricle, you cannot tell on this view, you have to do an LAO view. REO view, which is this, tells you you're going to the ventricle rather than the atria, which are here on this side. This is the AV groove, the circumflex, and atria will be here. So this is potentially fistula to a ventricle. You do an LAO view, and an LAO view will tell you it's uh, potentially fistula to the left ventricle. This is the LAD here running over the septum, and this is on this side of the LAD. So LAO tells you right versus left, RAO tells you ventricle versus atria. However, is this really a fistula to the left ventricle or is it something else? It is something else in my opinion. And it's a fairly common angiogram. You will see it one in every few hundreds angiogram. The reason I don't think it's a fistula is the following. You don't see directly the left ventricle. What you see first, you see myocardial wall stain blush, and you see myocardial LV wall boundaries delineated before you see the cavity fill. So you see myocardial blush first, wall blush, before you see cavity filling. Okay, and the cavity filling is relatively minor, which tells you it's not a fistula. A fistula will go straight into the cavity, not so much stain the wall and the boundaries. So what we have here, it is what we call dilated myocardial veins. We most commonly call those dilated Tibesian veins. So again, you see the myocardial wall stain and blush and LV myocardial boundary delineated before you see the cavity, which tells you that it's not a fistula, it's dilated myocardial wall veins, the so-called dilated Tibesian veins. And you see that even on the RCA injection, and commonly when you have those dilated Tibesian veins, you would see them on injection from the right coronary and from the left coronary. So you have dilated tibesian vein from the PDA and posterior lateral branches into the left ventricle. And this is a case from circulation where they describe the exact same angiographic findings and they call them as dilated tibesian vein. Bizarre appearance of capillary blush draining into the left ventricular cavity. Now, let me explain to you those Tibesian veins. There is a lot of debate about it, but here is a histological description. Normally, blood drains from the myocardial capillary into the major coronary venous system, which ends into the coronary sinus. But there is a smaller venous system. So rather than draining into that major coronary venous coronary sinus system, there is a more minor venous system, the Thebesian vein system, this number one here, where those veins drain directly into a cardiac cavity, whether right or left cavity, atrial or ventricular cavity. So those are veins that drain directly into any cavity. Those Tibesian veins may drain directly into the cavity or may go through a sinusoid lakes before eventually draining into the cavity. When the vein here, that Tibesian vein or the Tibesian sinusoid are dilated, you may have the appearance that we had on our angiogram. And when they are dilated, 
that dilatation is more common in the left ventricle. That's why we see those dilated thebesian veins more commonly on the left ventricle, even though thebesian veins are present in all cavity walls, but the dilated veins are more commonly, much more commonly seen toward the left ventricle. Unlike true coronary fistula, which are much more common toward the right heart. It's rare to have a coronary cameral fistula to the LV. A coronary cameral fistula means you have a communication between the artery and the cavity. You have a track that connects that artery directly to the cavity by passing that muscle. Whereas with the dilated Tibesian vein, the artery is still feeding the myocardium, which therefore does not get ischemic. It's not getting bypassed blood is not diverted away from it it's just the venous blood that is dilated and that drains into the cavity that's why those thebesian veins are different from a fistula they are not hemodynamically significant the myocardium is not getting ischemic it's just dilatation of normal anatomical venous structure whether this or that it causes a little bit of venous deoxygenated blood to LV shunting. And a proof that it's not hemodynamically significant are twofold. If this was a true hemodynamically significant shunt, you will have two problems. One, the myocardium itself will get ischemic and therefore because of the steel phenomena from the myocardium, the proximal artery will become dilated and aneurysmal as happens in coronary cameral fistula. Whereas here, the coronary is not aneurysmal. So that's a one indirect suggestion that those are not hemodynamically significant. Another way of proving that it's not hemodynamic significant is if it is hemodynamic significant, you will have a left to left shunt. It's almost like an AI and the LV will dilate and the LV in those patients is not dilated. So that's another proof that it's not hemodynamic significant. No big left to left shunt recirculation. And this is a summary of what I just described. When the venoluminal thebesian veins or the sinusoid are dilated, you may have the appearance of our angiogram and the, this dilatation is more often seen into the LV. This is not a traditional coronary cameral fistula as the artery does not communicate directly with the cavity. The artery feeds the myocardium, which therefore does not get ischemic. Then it is the venous blood that drains into the cavity. That is why it is not hemodynamically significant. And this is an anatomy paper that proved the presence of those Thebesian vein uh, normally. Now, I, like most interventionalists, like to call this angiographic appearance dilated Tibesian vein. However, the great Dr. Angelini believes that those communications are indeed coronary to LV microfistula, not Tibesian veins. But regardless, even Dr. Angelini considers them overwhelmingly insignificant hemodynamically. And he writes, the clinical relevance of these malformations is trivial and the flow through those microfistula are often not substantial enough to cause ischemia or angina at rest, making coronary steel unlikely. Blood flow in these microfistula appears to account for less than 2% of total coronary flow. So it is fine to call them dilated Tibesian sinusoid vein, and that's what I like to call them like most interventionists. It's okay to call them coronary to LV microfistula, like Dr. Angelini says, but regardless, the most important practical idea is that they are not hemodynamically significant. Don't be alarmed by those and don't alarm the patient by those. And again, the proof is that the upstream coronary is not usually significantly dilated, contrary to what happened in severe hemodynamic fistula. And also the LV does not dilate, unlike what would happen if you have significant left-to-left -left shunting. This is another angiographic case. Look at this angiogram here. This is an areocardal view. 
What is unusual? What do you see? You see here a fistula. You see a vessel filling a chamber and that chamber quickly empties. You see communication between that first septal and the cavity. This is a coronary cameral fistula. Now this is an audio view that separates the ventricles on one side and the atria on one side. So this is a coronary cameral fistula between the first septal and a ventricle, most likely, statistically speaking, the right ventricle. And this is another view of it here in an areocranial view. You see that long septal and it's emptying in a cavity here. Look at it and it's emptying in a cavity here. Again, it's on the ventricular side in an areo view. You have the AV groove where the circ is and this is on the ventricular side. Whenever you have a fistula, always remember to use your two views. REO looks in this direction into the AV groove and sets apart anterior structure, which are the ventricle, and the posterior structure, with, which are the atria. LAO looks over the septum and sets apart the right structures versus left structure. The same way when we engage left cusp versus right cusp. So in this patient, in order to confirm where that fistula is landing, we need to do an LAO view and confirm that it is indeed in the right ventricle, not into the left ventricle. But unfortunately, in this case, I don't have an LAO view, but overwhelmingly, it is on the right ventricle. Most coronary cameral fistula land on the right side of the heart and most frequently the RV than the RA. Only 3% terminate in the LV. And this may not even be a septal. It may be the fistula itself between the LAD and the right ventricle. This may be the fistulous tract rather than a septal because we don't see those ramified branches into the septum from that artery. What's interesting is that the echo in this patient showed what seems to be a possible small VSD. There was some color flow in the right ventricle. It wasn't a VSD, it was actually that coronary cameral fistula into the right ventricle. And this is a simple fistula, it's one track, and importantly, the vessel upstream has not become aneurysmal. If this was a large fistula with hemodynamic effect, the upstream vessel here, the left main or the proximal AD, will have become aneurysmal. So that's unlikely to be a hemodynamically significant fistula, and you can prove it via right heart cath, a lack of or two step up. So again, in sum, this is how a large fistula is defined according to its three major hemodynamic consequences. One is the left to right chanting with O2 step up on the right heart cath. Two, you have the aneurysmal proximal dilatation. And three, you have the coronary steel phenomena, which explains the aneurysmal dilatation, which you can document on stress testing. Now, beside the description of large fistula in terms of hemodynamic effect, you will hear other descriptors, anatomical descriptors. Fistula may be simple and consist of a single origin and a single track, like the case I just showed, single origin, single track, single termination. Fistula may also be complex, such as this case, where you have multiple origin and multiple terminations in the cavity the so-called plexiform spider web. A complex fistula does not mean it is large, it's just an anatomical descriptor. On the other hand, a simple fistula may be large and may have hemodynamic effect. Now, beside this complex plexiform, another definition of complex fistula is a fistula wherein the artery itself, the main artery itself, terminates in the cavity. So imagine that RCA here, it gives a PDA, and the PDA itself continues into the cavity. There is no separate distinct fistulous tract. That's also called a complex fistula. Now again, a large fistula is a fistula with hemodynamic effect. But there is another definition for a large fistula, which is anatomic, and it applies to the simple fistula with a single tract when this 
Fistula tract is equal to two times the caliber of the distal vessel. Such as here, imagine that this is the fistula tract and this fistula tract is two times larger than the distal LAD. That's clearly not the case here, but that's how a large single fistula would be defined anatomically beside the hemodynamic effect. How is a fistula treated? Number one, in order to treat a fistula, it has to be large, typically with hemodynamic effect. Number two, the way it's treated depends on the anatomical descriptors, and that's why those anatomical descriptors are helpful, mainly to decide the treatment strategy. If it is a simple fistula, it is treated surgically with ligation of its origin or tract, whereas a complex fistula is treated by patching the distal termination from inside the cavity. It is patched on the inside, and therefore all those complex plexiform tracts will thrombose. You cannot ligate all those complex tracts. Also, a simple single tract fistula may be treated percutaneously using an oversized coil embolization at the distal end of this fistula.